Thank you guys for joining us. I am here with Sean Bennett 618 to discuss the brand new album thanks for the be alive yeah look woke up this morning to some more bad news but i'm blessed i can't make no more mistakes i've been doing my best i won't settle for less doing well handling stress this life all just a test look at how far i progress and i'm forever thankful i'm alive you can find sean at s-e-a-n-b-e-n-n-e-t-t 618 on all streaming platforms go run it up right now do yourself a favor sean Thank you so much for coming tonight. Yeah, I appreciate you. This conversation is going to be so special. Oh, I'm really, really glad to be here. How you feeling? I'm feeling good. Um, yeah, I'm feeling good. I've been feeling like I've been on top of the world for the past week since I released that album. You should be feeling great. The album is amazing. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. It took a, it took a lot to get through the album because of uh, just stuff going on in life. But like to actually get it, get it out there, that was like, and you can really tell that you took your time just from the way that the songs are formatted and layout um you were very careful with your choices for this project and it shows um it's a very high quality album um but let's go back a little bit further like i, I don't want to necessarily just jump into the album because we're here to talk about that yeah. but let's kind of start where the album came from the genesis of it the dell carbondale yes yeah, that's where i'm from uh that's where a lot of my family from i mm -hmm. stayed out there quite a bit left when i was a kid went to like the st louis area but then i went to graduate from carbondale so i moved back to carbondale to graduate my senior year and uh yeah, that's my little hometown. Is it a big city? No, it's super small, super small. Everybody know everybody. Uh, you can leave your door unlocked all night, all day. And, you know, you might do something to you, don't know who did it, you know what I'm saying? So if it's super small, uh, a lot of big families in one town, mm -hmm. it's, it, it, it's home, you know? How did, how did the deal make you the man that you are? In many ways, I would say starting off with, I would say just, just learning about life, seeing people like going through certain things in life. It's a big party school out there. So a lot of people where we from, we kind of tend to like mix you up with the college students and treat you with them. Mm -hmm. And I feel like a lot of people waste their time doing that in life. Mm -hmm. So you see a lot of grown folks like just doing childish stuff. And I don't know, it motivated me to want to be away from it. I grew away from it. I, uh, Learn from it and just wanted to go away from it. It was so much more experience and stuff I wanted to learn about rather than just going to the bar every day and uh, sitting on the block drinking every day, you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? You know, that's that's how we grew up and, you know, that was our time, but I just always wanted more for myself outside of Carbondale. And that's what kind of led me into the military after high school. I didn't have no plans at all. I knew if I went to college in Carbondale, it just wouldn't have worked out. Like, you know what I'm saying? So that was my escape route. Get away from that. Learn how to travel, and that's how I probably wound up here in Vegas. Like I just you know, move around. So. I was gonna ask you about Vegas. I mean, because Vegas is. I mean, if you're not from here, um, usually you have like a reason to be here, yeah. like whether it's a personal reason or a professional reason. Yeah. Why? Why was it Vegas for you? Vegas is it's crazy, right? Because I had met. I had met my partner at that time. Uh, she had just moved to Vegas uh, from Ohio. And uh, I just randomly came out here to hang out with her for a weekend and never left. No way. Yeah, never left. <laughs> I've heard of those stories. Yeah, yeah, never left. And I had, I mean, I literally found a job while I was on the, uh, I was flying here. I, the person I sat next to, he had ran a, a cleaning business. And he was like, you know, I was telling him how I moved out here. I, been just sick I was staying or whatever and uh, he was like yeah you know we do yard work all kind of stuff he's like I can get you put on you know if you're serious and then I, so I had a job in my I back pocket you. Yeah, yeah, in the whole class so I just didn't have no reason to go back to Carpenter at that point I was like you know it worked out it must have been meant to be yeah facts so um just to kind of go into the project a little bit I mean there is a lot of really 
deeply sentimental, heartfelt material on there. But the tone of the album doesn't feel heavy. Yeah. It's really upbeat. And it's almost like you want to sing and dance, but also cry no, at the same yeah, time. And was that like something that you did on purpose because you knew that the subject matter yeah. was so sincere and kind of emotional to keep the feel of it upbeat? Yeah, and it's crazy because me and the producer, we was going back and forth about that because he was like basically telling me like he wanted more, how you say it, not radio hits, but stuff that can appeal to a certain crowd. And I kept telling them I have to stay true to what I do and who I appeal to. But I'm like, but I don't want every song to be down and sad. I want to bring uplifting spirits from this bad situation. I want people to know that, like, even though we go through stuff, we get through it as well. You know what I'm saying? So that was just my whole goal with the album. I'm like, I don't want to keep beating them down with sad songs. I want them to feel, you know what I'm saying? That's why when we transferred from track one to track two, you could feel the energy change. You know what I'm saying? That's just kind of how I wanted to set the tone for the entire project. And working with a producer helped that out too, because I could tell him the type of emotions I was feeling and what I wanted to do for the sound I wanted. So that helped out a lot. That was a first for me. Okay, and as far as the production, did you work with just one person or multiple people? Who did the production? It was actually supposed to be one person, Krusha. Uh, he did a he did about eight or nine songs on there. And then just something in the back of my mind told me to reach out to my bro from back home because he always usually makes my projects. Mm -hmm. He didn't make my last one, so I kind of felt the way about him not being able to make my last one. But shout out to you, Nick. He came through clutch. Mm -hmm. Send me a few beats, and I ended up knocking out. I ended up filling the rest of the album out with his, his production. So that, that was a cool moment for me as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just my favorite song on the album is Disappeared. I can't get it out of my head. Like, I promise you, the hook, it, it just has been with me since I started listening yeah. to it. And um, the features that you have on there, like, was the fact that it's not super feature heavy made you, like, very choosy and conscious of the people that you did. Yeah, you because know? my whole goal with, when it comes to the features is I always wanted to work with certain artists and labels. You know what I'm saying? When I first moved out here, nobody even knew who I was. I had I had a whole list of names of everybody I was watching, keeping up with, and I was saying I was gonna work with them in the future. So it was like a manifesto. My last project was the first project that I actually had Vegas artists on it. Uh, Spittle, Two C's, Tay Benz, James Wade, you know what I'm saying, stuff like that, Eve Dye, Sally. Mm -hmm. So uh, this project, I wanted to capture the ones that I didn't get, because there was still other ones, Landlord, Weeds, that I still wanted to work with, and I'm like, I gotta find some way to get these guys on this project. I, and that's that was like the victory lap for me as far as like the Vegas standpoint of artists that I work with. I felt like I completed everybody, still working with doing this track with Dizzy Wright, and then that'd be complete. Like everybody that I want to work with, I manifested it. Okay, so you was able to check all the boxes yep, off. Down. I love that for you. Do you have a favorite song? On the oh, album? Oh, and, and why? I would personally say, my favorite song would be the last song, only because of how we put it together. Uh, okay. All the other songs was great. Like I love all the other songs, but the last song itself was just super personal to me because the only time I ever heard my choir sing that song was when my grandfather passed away. So when he when I first heard it back then, I was like 2007, 2008. I was in the military at the time. But when I heard it then, I was like, "This is a great song." You know, I always remembered the song, but never heard it again. Grandma just passed. As I was sitting in church, I was crying, and they started singing the song, and it's just something struck in my head to capture that moment because I'll never hear it again unless I'm probably at somebody else's funeral. You know? But so I captured that moment, and I literally texted uh, Crucia that day, and I'm like, and then we was already one beat in, mm -hmm. so this is our second beat we made together. So I'm like, bro, if you can make a beat out of this, then this project is yours. You can pretty much control the whole project. Wow. Send me a beat in like. Mm -hmm. Played the beat for days. I couldn't put a, a lyric on it, but yeah, that's probably one of my favorite ones uh, to listen to. And it's the last song, so it's like you, after you get through everything, you get to that last point of that song, 
And that's something that always hits me hard. Yeah, because you related to yeah, your so grandmother yeah, and your grandfather's yeah. past. And yeah, yeah. Can you tell me what art your grandma, who you refer to, well, your past on the album referred to as Mother Lewis, what part did her passing play in you creating this work? I would say she was always a hard person with us, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was all for the good, you know, you know that I got older and realized that. Um, but I would say, like I said earlier, like, it's just kind of one of the things, like, I had to lose her in order to find my motivation with this. Uh, because I was at a point where when she when she passed, I didn't care to make any music at the moment. Uh, I kind of got heavy into temp work, but I still live back on my own to create this music. It was just art. And uh, finally, uh, me and Skitter started working on songs. And he probably don't even know this, but like once we started doing that, that's when my mo motivation slowly started coming back to record again. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And uh, that helped out a lot. And, uh, that definitely boosted the uh, the recording process up for me. And I just got back in there and just started just feeling good about the stuff I was making, more than it was feeling forced, you know what I'm saying? It was, I felt like I was forcing stuff. So you let it be something that pushed you from behind rather than yeah. held you back. Yeah. Yeah. That's beautiful. I want to tell you my hip-hop quotable moment of the album, okay? All right, for sure. I wrote this down because <laughs> It was that serious for me. You said, a lot of friends I grew up with either dead or in jail. I hate to see most of my homies still stuck in the jail. I went to work for all my niggas. They tucking their tail. Mm -hmm. The same people clap for you, but want you to fail. But I learned life at an early age. The story doesn't last forever. Gotta cherish every page. Ooh. I've been going hard for years. Leveled up, reached every stage. My nigga, it's your time now. You fail, you're the one to blame. So, like, these lyrics right here show me a man who has struggled, who has been down, who has been betrayed and hurt, but still has the intestinal fortitude and the testicular fortitude to still be doing the same thing, yeah. getting up and showing up month after month, day after that. And um, let me just say, as a listener, I appreciate that so much. It's so motivational. It's so inspirational. And um, if nobody ever tells you this, yeah. I would tell you this right now, that it means the world to me and there's people that's watching you, Sean. There's people that's listening to you that your work is important to. And you gotta know that. I feel that, I do feel that. And that, that's, that's what keeps me going, honestly. Um, I, I've had many moments that I just want to just stop doing it. I don't be like putting it on the internet, like I'm quitting rapping or nothing like that, but it was turning to sit back thinking on stuff. Sometimes I reflect and be like, what am I still going for? And then it's songs like that, lyrics like that. When I bring that out, I be like, I got a reason. And somebody gonna hear that and it's gonna hit them, you know, the way it hit me. So they keep me going for sure. What's some of the ways that you deal with things like, you know, not feeling motivated like how do you recharge your spirit it's crazy as it sounds i just work harder at whatever i'm trying to do at that moment even if it's just with my camera mm -hmm. uh with my job uh, with my home i just find some type of motivation to keep me going and whatever if it's not music at that moment i come back to it when the time is right uh but yeah i just i just keep moving forward you feel your way through it. Yeah, yeah. I'm silent when it comes to stuff like that. I'm very private. So you'll never be able to just read me and like know I'm going through certain things. You know what I'm saying? It's hard for people to read me. Uh, but yeah, I just keep going. I just keep pushing forward. You get another 24 the next day. So you just ride me out. That's what you said on the album. You got all the tools you need <laughs> yeah. to succeed. Yeah. So 
So you're not lacking for anything, you're not wanting for anything. It's just what you do with what you have or what you don't do with it. Uh, like I said, I tell everybody that all the time. Everybody got that same food for them. Uh, so you got no time for it, you got no time for it. So the time is there, so you don't have much time. Right. <laughs> and that's another theme through the album is that, like, I mean, if we can just be frank about it, our tickets are already punched. Yeah, yeah. You know, our date is already set. So you said it, and I don't about the song, but you said, I'm the one that got to die. <laughs> so that means that I'm going to live the life that I have envisioned for myself before that happens. Yeah, that's, and just take control of your life. Uh, try not to let the internet control you or a man or a woman control you. It's your life, you know, so I tell people that as well. Like, take control of your life and just live it. That's right, because these other things that's out there have their own agendas yeah. for you. And if you don't set your own, then you're gonna end up following somebody else's. Yep, yep. And then you're gonna regret it in the long run. You're sitting in that retirement home or that hospital bed and you reflecting back on your life, you're gonna remember a lot of stuff. You know what I'm saying? When that time comes for me, I wanna just make that the best moment in life and reflect. Play my whole YouTube channel. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and you can go out that road. But I don't really like to speak on death, I just try to acknowledge it as well because it just, it, you know, I, I lost many friends, uh, lost many people, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people in the world has lost, you know, had the same thing. But yeah, I just, I just understand it a little different as I get older. Stuff starts changing, in your, stuff start changing in your body a little different. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You start, start feeling that age. You start thinking of things. You know what I'm saying? And I've had sit downs with myself where I thought of that. Yeah, it's a scary moment, but I always told myself I'll be prepared for whatever in life. But until that time comes, I'm going to make sure I do what I want to do in life. Live how I want to live, touch the people I want to touch, and you know what I'm saying? My music will live on forever. And I see that that's something that's really important to you, too, that your work inspires other people. Yeah. Like, you do that intentionally. Yeah. I. It's kind of crazy because I, I came from a time where I just kind of, I would call it like a little identity crisis as far as what kind of music I wanted to put out at one point in time. Uh, I was heavily influenced by certain rappers, artists, the Atlanta Wave at one point in time. Uh, but when I changed my name to my actual real name, I felt like that's when everything started changing as far as my sound. Uh, I brought out the real me. That's when I found who I actually was. And I knew my purpose with music was to motivate people. I didn't want to be a part of what's tearing people down. I wanted to be the person that people can pick up the phone if they feel some type of way, stream my music and like catch some type of motivation to feel like they can get through the next day. Or if they stuck at work, they can get through that next four hours as they should, which that will take. But yeah, that was just always my goal, just to motivate the next person. Absolutely. And I can hear some of those musical influence. You interpolate certain things yeah. on certain songs. Like, who musically is still influencing you to this day? Still to this day? <laughs> NBA Young Boy. <laughs> Listen, I if, it's, if this wasn't your heart, <laughs> yeah, Sean, yeah. There's no judgment. It should say judgment for you. It's <laughs> yeah. not what we do. Yeah, yeah, young boy, for sure. He, uh, it's funny that I laugh because a lot of people laugh when I tell them that's like our everyday listen. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's more than just shooting people. And he got other music. He got other pockets he get into. He does, and I've heard those things. I've heard a lot of deep songs from him. Uh, my, one of my favorite songs that kind of like made me start listening to him more was called John Symbols. Okay. And basically, he was talking about killing himself for the whole song. Wow. And uh, yeah, once I heard that, it got pretty deep because my friend had just killed himself. Uh, so like hearing that song, it put me in a perspective of maybe what he was going through. Uh, but I always appreciated that song. And ever since that day, I started listening to him a lot more. And of course, I like to turn up songs from him, but he can get real deep in songs. And you do reference that, yeah. um, you know, your friends, you know, suicide. I, I call suicide death of like just sadness. Like yeah. it's, it's. I mean, to me, it's just um, a person that just gets 
overwhelmed. And um, what do you feel like you're doing to intentionally take care of your mental health with all the stress? That yeah, you have? and like even just like for him, like he actually he was my cameraman, you know, and he was everybody's cameraman. Uh, and I just feel like he reached his breaking point. Uh, he was just he was stressed. He was yeah, he was going through so much, stressing, people demanding. So now that I'm gonna do camera work, I try to, I try to make sure if my if I start feeling like that, to just take a break from it. Mm -hmm. I I will definitely message the artist and tell them you need to just give me a few more days or something like that. But I got you. You know what I'm saying? I even accommodate you sometimes. But it can be overwhelming for sure. So I try to keep everything balanced correctly. Uh, always keep my energy high. And I always do my day to day, whatever my daily routine, I always make sure I stick with that at least to eight for me. It's me, 5 30 in the morning going to the gym. I make sure I do me first, and then I get back to everybody else in the world. I love that show. Yeah, you got to. You got to make sure you're doing stuff for you. And you, you know, you keep your spiritual covering on you as well. You say, Pray, you know? Yeah, all the time. All the time. All the time. I know you do that too. Yeah, all the time. So that's, that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Um, I also wanted to kind of go a little bit back to the production mm -hmm. on the album, just because like I have to give, you said Kusha? Yeah, Kusha. I have to give him his flowers. Me too. Um, <laughs> as well as the artists that's featured on there, yeah. uh, well, Chris Brooks, Taylor Weave, Landlord, Brody. We, TMBA Brody, yeah. Weebo, everybody, all the features that you had lined up just matched up so perfectly. And everybody did what they were supposed to do and just burp they burst. Yeah, I like I liked when I heard people, like who was that? Well, we both. He said he actually enjoyed uh, coming to like my sound and doing music like that. So he was like, that was cool. His, his mom actually like heard the song and he was like playing it and she felt like he had to get on it. So it was like different for him as well. Uh, even just we just did Landlord on the song. Like I know that's everybody's favorite and favorite song. It was just like so cool for me to be able to do that. Uh, and I, I just give praise to my platform as well because that helped me get out of my shell. I was in a full blown shell when I moved out here. Like that helped me get outside more, meet every artist, and I done shot for everybody in Vegas. Yeah, you have. <laughs> it helped me meet people. It helped me get outside. It helped me. Like people to know me, learn me a little bit. Uh, so that that helped out a lot too as well with my last two projects and reaching out to artists and stuff. Uh, and they feel the genuine love too as well. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm not. I don't have any hidden agendas on anything. Anything. I just want to make dope music with dope artists. You know? Yeah. And yeah. one that I respect. A real genuine yeah. individual. Yeah. And you know, you can always tell when it's done from love. Yeah. You know, versus being done from some other motivation you ain't in. Yeah. But when it's done from real love, you can feel it, regardless of what's said. Yeah, definitely. So, I feel like that was the production too. Like, uh, it was a. Uh, at first, it was a little battle trying to get everything how we wanted to. But at the end of the day, everything that we was going through, it all built up to bring out the project for the better. You know what I'm saying? Because it was times where I'm very. Uh, What's the word? I'm sensitive about my shit. Oh, there we go. So if somebody <laughs> tell me they're not feeling a verse or they're not feeling it, I do. I put my all in that shit. <laughs> you know? But it's all like, it's good criticism. I never had anybody to tell me something like that. Most of the people that I was hanging with was just telling me, yeah, that sounds good, you know? But I actually had somebody like, nah, maybe you should go to this direction. And it made me like, sometimes I got mad that I had to catch myself, like, give this man a chance. He know what he's doing. Go back to the drawing board and try it again, and that's just how it was. And you know, like I said, looking back at it, it's like I understand now. You know, yeah, and it worked out. You can take that correction and just yep. get it with love. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. So, shout out to Chef because, like I tell him all the time, you played a big role into this, super big role. Yeah, he did his thing. He really did. Um, do you have um like in idea or a layout of what's going to be next for you what's next yes oh uh, i'm gonna still be filming that's just something that 
I want to take a little bit more serious. Mm-hmm. Um, but as far as like from a music standpoint, I want to tap into a new sound. Okay. Uh, just for the summertime, you know, people like oh, to wait. turn up in the summer a little bit. So I kind of want to try something different where I'm bringing that sound out, but I'm still staying true to my character. Uh, I got some artists in mind out here that, you know, another level of artists that I want to work with at some Vegas with this one. Uh, Trey Bizzle, uh, Liz Sox. I can't give everybody names. Right. You know what I'm saying? I got some, I got some heavy hitter names on this next one I plan on working on. Uh, but who knows? You know, you never know what tomorrow might bring. You never know anything. So I just go with the flow. That's what right. happens is gonna happen. It's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna work out for itself. That's right. But, Whatever changes happen, let them yeah, happen organically. Yeah, definitely. But I, I, I do have a few more songs that didn't make the project that I'm thinking about the lunch That's wonderful. Yeah. I was actually thinking, <laughs> like, was there anything that you wish that you could have added yeah. into the project that you did? And it was one of the things, like, my last project was 20 songs. I didn't want 20 songs and all for another one. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I had to, like, pick songs, cut songs out. So I've been I've been leaning towards dropping a deluxe project for it. Ooh, yay! We get another one. Yeah, add some more good dope songs on it. So, um, as far as the Overlook Heroes platform, mm-hmm. um, clearly you're doing your thing. You're working so much. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, not to mention the fact that you're releasing albums on your own. You know, you have a life. Yeah. You know, you have a nine to five. Everything. <laughs> um, I mean, like, I need your secret because, like, I'm <laughs> fighting for my life right yeah. now, Sean. I'm doing school, work, and the house. And, like, that is already so much. But the fact that you're doing the and added to everything else that you're doing, like, I don't see how you keep it all. I don't know how I do it either. I, I kind of always say that they were like, how am I doing this? But it's all, like... I will tell you, if I give you any advice, block scheduling is, is something that I learned how to do real well. Um, so that's something like I kind of like took pride in last year in doing, block scheduling my days, having my routines already set so I can know what to expect. Uh, that helps. Uh, yeah, just balancing out your time. Uh, like I say, time moves so fast now. Oh my you'll be doing something in the morning, you'll look up at nighttime already. Um, so yeah, I just try to balance it as much as I can. It's super hard, bro. But we make it work, bro. Yeah, we figure it out. We figure it out, make it work. We have, we have no other yeah, choice. Got no other choice. There's yeah. literally no other option. We gotta figure this shit out. Figure, yeah, I try to figure it. I try to figure it out and just keep going. Um, but yeah, even just like with me going to Phoenix and stuff like that as well. Like I love that city as well. You show a lot of love out there, but it gets super busy when I go visit there because. I had 48 hours to them, mm-hmm. and they start booking, they start booking. I've had like 20 artists lined up, you know what I'm saying? And I make it work every time, so I never doubt or question the man above and what he does with my time, because it's always a great job. Mm-hmm. That's right, and you know, like you said, when we know who's for us, it could be against us. Yeah. It all works out for our good. All the time, it always works. But great album. I did enjoy making it. I, I hope so. I enjoyed the ending product more than making it, I would say. But like when you we can kind of pull it out. Yeah. Because I mean I honestly started the project mm-hmm. August. Right? I had when I make projects, usually it starts off with whatever I feel like could be an intro for for the start of the project. So once I made the intro, that's when I knew I could make a project out of it. So that's kind of like pretty much that and then making the cover art. Once I get the cover art done and I don't have any songs done, that's when I'm ready to start adding songs to it. You know what I'm saying? So I knew I wanted to do something for my grandmother. And that's just like I knew I wanted to make sure she got out on a good path and I was able to bring my music into it for my family. Come on up. Yeah. Yeah. I sit back and let my thoughts think ahead. Been working hard all these years, ain't got no time for no pen. 